Hi, welcome back to the solutions manual. In this video, we will solve the problem 8-25 from R.C. Hebeler Engineering Statics Corp. Edition. According to this problem, the drum has a weight of 100 lb and rests on the floor for which the coefficient of static friction is 0.5. If A is 3 feet and B is 4 feet, we have to determine the smallest magnitude of the force B that will cause impending motion of the drum. So first of all, we have to establish a condition that P can cause slipping as well as tipping over. of the drum. So we have to check both of the cases. So starting from the slipping case, so for slipping, objects can be treated as particles. So if I consider the whole drum as a particle and if I draw the free body diagram then it would look something like this. Let's say this is the particle presenting the drum. So here I have the weight force acting in a downward direction I have a normal reaction from the floor acting in the upward direction. I have this force P exerted by the man at an angle. Also, I would have a frictional force as well from the floor and it would be in the opposite direction of the motion. So if this is the direction of motion, then the frictional force would be in the opposite direction. So this is the direction of frictional force. Let's label them. This right here is N. This is the weight which is 100 lb. This is the force of friction and this right here is the force P. Now I have to resolve the force P into its components. So I have one vertical component and one horizontal component. Also we have been given this 3, 4, 5 triangle. So the vertical component of the P force is P into the opposite which is 3 over the hypotenuse and the horizontal component is P the adjacent component which is 4 divided by hypotenuse which is 5. Furthermore when the slipping is occurring the frictional force F can be written as mu s times n. So now we can apply the equations of equilibrium. So my first equation would be summation of forces in x direction equals to 0. I am considering the right hand side as positive. So we have negative f plus the horizontal component of the force p which is p into 4 upon 5 equals to 0. And since f is mu s times n and mu s is given as 0 0.5 so we have 0 0.5 n plus 0 0.8 p equals to 0. Let's call this equation 1. Now in this equation I have two unknowns but a single equation. So I have to form the another equation as well. And my second equation would be from summation of forces in y direction equals to 0. I am considering up direction as positive. So we have n minus the weight of the drum which is 100 minus the vertical component of the force p. So p into 3 upon 5 equals to 0. So upon simplification we have n minus 0 0.6p equals to 100. So let's call this equation 2. So now I have two equations and two unknowns. So I have to simultaneously solve them. 
So I'm going to use the method of substitution. So from equation one, if I make n the subject, so I have n equals to 0 0.8 times p divided by 0 0.5. So upon simplification, n comes out to be 1.6 p. Let's call this equation three. And put equation 3 in equation 2 into this equation. So equation 2 becomes one point six p minus zero point six p equals to hundred. So p is equals to hundred LPs. Since to check the conditions for tipping over, we would have to use the force n, which is the normal force. To find the value of the n, we have to put p equals to 100 albies in equation 3 into this equation. So n comes out to be 1.6 into 100 which means n is 160 LPs. So these are the values of P and N when we have assumed that the drum is flipping and it is not tipping over. But as we had established earlier that the P can also cause the tipping over. So now we have to check whether the tipping over can occur or not. So for tipping over, Objects are treated as rigid bodies. So if I draw all the forces onto this drum, then the forces would look something like this. So let me zoom in. We have the weight force which is acting in a downward direction. We have this force P and we have the frictional force from the floor. I have to resolve the force P into its components. So I have the vertical component and the horizontal component. Also, we have one more force, which is the normal force from the floor. And I'm going to consider it some distance off from the middle of the drum. Let's say somewhere here and let's label them. So this right here is the force P and the vertical component is P 3 upon 5 and the horizontal component is P 4 upon 5. We have this weight of the drum which is 100 LBs. This is the force N, normal reaction from the floor and this is the force of friction. Let's say the N is located at a distance of X from the center. So this is our free body diagram in the case of tipping. So if I just zoom out. Now to check in actual whether the tipping is occurring or not. So we have to consider a situation that for tipping over. N has to be located on the point of tipping over. So it means N has to be located on the point at which the drum is about to tip over. So if I zoom in on this picture, so we can see that the drum will tip over about this point. So it means X has to be A upon 2 actually because the weight is acting in the middle. So it means 1.5 feet. 
So when we solve our equations of equilibrium for the tipping over case and we get our x value as 1.5 bit, then we have to consider that this force P is actually causing the tipping over of this drum as well. So let's verify it, like whether the x value is 1.5 bit or not. X has to be 1.5 bit for tipping over. So let me copy the free body diagram. So let's call this point O. And my first equation of equilibrium would be summation of moments at point O equals to zero. I am considering the counterclockwise direction as positive. Since the line of action of the 100 LP force and the force of friction are passing through the point O, so they will not produce any moment about point O because they don't have any moment arm with respect to the point O, which is serving as our pivot point. The force N is trying to rotate the drum in counterclockwise direction about point O. So the moment produced by the force N would be taken as positive. And the moment arm is the distance X. The horizontal component of the P force, which is P 4 upon 5, is trying to rotate the drum in clockwise direction about point O. So the moment produced by the horizontal component of the force P will be taken as negative. So negative P into 4 upon 5 and the moment arm is the distance B which is given as 4 fit and A is 3 fit. Also if I draw the projection of the vertical component of the P force. So this right here is also P 3 upon 5. Then the vertical component is trying to rotate the drum in counterclockwise direction. So the moment produced by the vertical component of force P will be taken as positive. So P into 3 upon 5. And the moment arm is this distance. which is a upon 2 and since a is 3 fit so it means 1.5 equals to 0. So when I substitute the values because earlier we had the values of n as 160 lb and p as 100 lb. So when I substitute the values I have 160 into x minus 100 into 0 0.8 into 4 plus 100 into 0 0.6 into 1.5 equals to 0. So upon simplification, x comes out to be 1.4375 fit. Since the necessary distance for the tipping to occur is 1.5 fit and the actual value which is 1.4375 fit is less than 1.5 fit. So tipping does not occur. So drum only slips and P is 100 LPs. This is our answer. So, this is it for this problem. I hope you would find this video helpful. If you do, please make sure to subscribe to this channel and also turn on the bell icon for the daily updates. If you have any questions or any doubts in the free body diagram or in the frictional conditions, for the slipping and tipping over, then feel free to ask in the comment section and I will answer it as soon as possible. Thank you.